Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on pulmonary uh, lecture number 21, intubation to ventilator. Now with the NCLEX, now ventilators are a little bit different as far as your understanding what you need to know. It's mainly the uh, leading up to the causes behind and then the, um, the aspect of how do you manage a ventilator. Um, but as far as the real intricate um, intubation and ventilator, you're not really responsible to know all that stuff. So always understand that. So when you're studying this, it's, it's all about assessment. And when we're thinking about assessment, we are thinking about what is the pa how do we know when the patient is in distress? And that's these signs and symptoms, which we talked about in the previous lecture. This is acute respiratory distress. And distress will work over a period of time. And we talked about how respirations go up, and then once they start to go down, we are moving more towards failure. And respiratory failure is a later sign. And respiratory failure is a little bit more in depth because the fact is, is that how do we truly know whether or not this person needs to be intubated? We just don't intubate based on these signs and symptoms. So what we try to do is, is that we, we need to draw some blood work and to see where that patient is. And that's in the form of an ABG, a sputum possibly, chest x-ray, CBC, e ECGs, and we usually might anticipate swans depending on the underlying condition. From those results, then we end up getting a um, blood gas. And from the blood gas, we'll then have more um, data. And based on this data, we will either intubate or use more invasive um, mechanisms to ventilate that patient. But like I said before, it's usually from an underlying cause, um, whether it's an oxygen failure or a ventilation failure. Please see my previous lecture where I talked about acute respiratory failure. But now we're talking about intubation. So when the decision is finally made to intubate, um, the first key is, is to uh, prepare the patient. And the way that we prepare the patient is, is that you know we inform the patient that they are alert that this might be happening. And what we're really trying to do is always think about a ventilator as doing the work for the patient when the patient can no longer do the work. They can no longer ventilate themselves, so therefore they need a ventilator to help them. It's generally a temporary solution for an acute situation that is compromising that patient. All right, so a quick overview. I'm going to cover this a little bit more in depth later, but a quick overview of intubation is that it basically will go like this. We get baseline vital signs. We have an ABG. And then what happens is, is that you know respiratory call is called or um, a hospitalist or whoever the doctor is, and we get an ET tube. Now this ET tube will be specific to sizes. Now, depending on the size, um, it's usually related to what the patient um, looks like. And the higher the numbers, the bigger the size. Okay. And then what would happen is, is that um, you'll also get a uh, laryngoscope. Now a laryngoscope is, there's two types. So there is a Miller, which it looks like an L. And this laryngoscope is it has a light on it. And that light, when you intubate somebody, you're going to go into the mouth, and what you're going to do is, is that you're going to place this in to um, pull back the, to the tongue to expose the vocal cords. All right, that's the Miller. And then there is a Mac and um, and that one's curved, kind of like a Macintosh apple. So these are usually preference. It doesn't really mean you need to use this one or you need to use this one. Also, I'm just covering ET tubes. There are other tubes. There's uh, LMAs and so on, and there's a Kong, and you know. But that's not important. You're just supposed to understand the basic principles. You're not even responsible to know the sizes. I or this right here. I'm just covering it. So you get vital signs, you have an ABG, you say you're going to intubate, you get the ET tube, 
and then you the respiratory therapist hospitalist will choose which one they're going to use and then what we do is this next step is is that we're going to hyper oxygenate the patient so when we hyper oxygenate the patient is is that we might be bagging them at this stage remember a patient that is um is uh going to be intubated um, is no longer breathing for themselves. So we'll be, we'll probably be bagging that patient and that's connected to 100% oxygen and um, we are bagging them through there before we intubate. So then we're going to intubate them and then what will happen is, whoops, hold on. We're going to remove the bag and then they're going to try to intubate. Once they intubate, I'm not going to get into it too much, but you're going to pass the ET tube through the vocal cords, and they're going to also going to have a little bubble here. And this little balloon is will be inflated, and that will inflate the cuff. Okay, at that stage, once a patient is intubated, we are then going to connect the bag. with a CO2 connector. Now a CO2 connector, now this is not a total accurate um, mechanism. And what it does is, is that we call what's called color change. And what we do is we bag the patient, and if we're in the lungs, we're expecting this color to change. I'm not gonna get into different colors because it's different, doesn't matter but that's a CO2 detector. And if it's in the lungs, we should get CO2 back. That means it might be in the right place. But the only definitive way to know is a chest X-ray. So you would anticipate a chest X-ray after an intubation. So what happens is if we start to bag this patient through here, we'll check for a CO2 detector. If we're good with this color change, we'll then tape the um, or use the uh, appliance piece um, by your policy and to their um, lip. Now what this will be on one side of the lip and it will also be measure, measured. Like there's all measurements on this ET tube. And what happens is, is that you measure the lip and then you will then place that patient on a ventilator. Once they are on a ventilator you will then monitor and what you monitor is uh, saturations. And when you're looking at saturations, you're going to see whether or not um, there's bilateral um, expansion. So when you have a patient who has been just intubated, you will then um, place a CO2 detector on there. You'll bag that patient. You'll hope for color change. You will listen with your ears on both sides with your stethoscope of the lungs that's a nursing assessment, and you're lo lo looking for bilateral um, equal um, breaths as you are bagging that patient. All right, that's a lot of information, and then you'll get a chest x-ray, but let me go through it really quick. All right, so first thing is, is when a patient needs to be intubated, you first will usually see that patient happening before it actually starts to happen. There are late signs and then there's early signs. That's the boat coming, this is the boat is here. Once the patient is here, then we are going to um, do some things. We're gonna do an ABG, we'll do a sputum chest x-ray, CBC. We're gonna draw some blood work. And then what will happen is, is that from that blood work, we're gonna get our ABGs. From that ABGs, we'll then make a decision to intubate the patient. Then once we intubate, start to intubate the patients, we are going to get an ET tube that is specific to their size. And um, we also get either a Miller or a Mac, which is a laryngoscope that is going to help intubate. We'll also have a CO2 detector, which is going to test whether or not the placement is in a spot. It's not absolute though, um, because the only absolute way is a chest X-ray. So you then intubate the patient. Once the patient is intubated, you go past the vocal cords. They used to teach cricord pressure, but they don't do that anymore. And what happens is, is once you go through, you will inflate the, the balloon so the cuff is inflated. Then you will bag the patient with a CO2 detector, look for color change. 
that you will then listen to both sides of the lungs in a zigzag format on the front side and looking for bilateral bilateral lung expansion. If you have ipsilateral, one side is expanding, they might pull back the ET tube a little bit. Then you will tape the ET tube or, or use your appliance that you use um, and then get a chest x-ray for that patient. So intubation in the NCLEX is not really necessarily knowing what to do during it, but some basic things that you might be responsible for. A CO2 detector, understanding what that is. A ET tube, understanding that that is acute and um, that is intubation. A, uh, um, and listening to lung sounds post uh, intubation. Then you will then uh, get a chest x-ray. So understanding those steps and what happens next, we're going to talk about in the next lecture just basically what happens on a ventilator and when they, what you're responsible to know on a ventilator. All right, nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com, and these are my study notes on found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and talk to you next time.